Good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in to our three o'clock briefing. It's March 21st. We have some information to share with you. And let me start out by just giving you some really good news. And that is that the, the mail has been delivered or received, I should say it wasn't delivered, it was received. And I wanna start out by thanking you all for your patience. Um, and your support. This has not been something anybody's ever dealt with before, which is having the U.S. Postal Service refuse to deliver mail. But this morning, uh, Russell Gardner and the accounting team got a call from Abigail Spamberger's office indicating that Westminster Canterbury Richmond would be free to come to the Brook uh, Street, Brook, Brook, Out, Brook Road Depot and pick up the mail and they would release it to us. And so uh, soon after that, a, a group of staff went to the depot and picked up the mail. My understanding is we had four van loads of mail that was brought over. Um, I wanna make it clear, Abigail Spamberger's office has been very, very responsive. They've returned phone calls, they've initiated conversations with the Postal Service, and um, we couldn't be more thankful for their help. David Jones, Marty Kane, Russell um, went to the post office, received seven days worth of mail. Like I said, I think it was four van loads. Going forward, Marty and David from accounting will be retrieving the mail from the Brook Road post office each day at 11 a.m. That's Tuesday through Friday. Uh, before it comes to you, we have to sort it and we have to deliver it. That's gonna take us a little while, so you should plan on getting your mail mid to late afternoon each day. We still have to come up with a plan for Saturday, but it won't be too different, I suspect. Also, for today, today's um, deliveries, Stacy Nannery and a team of people sorted out the pharmacy and other med supplies from the general mail and, we'll, and get that delivered. And we wanna thank them for that, because that's, there was a great deal of urgency on behalf of many uh, people and our, ourselves included to make sure those med medical supplies and medications got to folks. Jennifer Sil Sylvester, uh, Russell's assistant, and Deborah Jacobson coordinated a, a brilliant delivery system uh, that will get everybody's packages in ma their mail to your door uh, sometime today, soon. It's, on, it's in process right now. So, we can just wanna say wow and thank you because uh, it is, there was a whole apartment filled with mail and we expect we'll be able to get most all of it out uh, this afternoon. St employees from a number of different departments worked on that. I walked in the room and I think there were 18 people in a small studio apartment sorting mail and, and getting it to, the, to its right locations. Um, another just huge wow to borrow uh, a phrase from Russell. Abigail Spamberger's office called and, and shared with us that a number of residents had called her office and were prodding the process along as well. And for that, I'm thankful. I know Russell's thankful, but I will pass along. They've asked that we refrain from calling back because the, uh, they have other work and our case is still open and they will stay on it, but we do have a process now for getting our mail. And, and so we appreciate your assistance, but I think um, we can stop calling Abigail's office for now. <laughs> um, given the action plan um, that we have underway, um, Abigail's office is, is, is gonna stand back and, and assume we have it under control. If, if something goes sideways, she's, their office has offered to step back in and help us. So now a little bit of clarity. So we are gonna get your incoming mail. We're gonna sort it, we're gonna deliver it to you. We do not have keys to your mailboxes. So we will not be putting mail in your boxes. We will be putting it outside your apartment or bringing it to you. Outgoing mail, we have three ways that you can get mail out. The first is you can take it, assuming you're not on mandatory quarantine, if you're not on mandatory quarantine, you can take it to one of the blue outgoing U.S. Postal Service boxes, either at the Brown Garden doors, just outside the Brown Garden doors, 
or at the Avalon entrance. Those are being picked up every day by the US Postal Service. Or you can take it to the center desk or the tower desk and we will put it in an outgoing box for you. Do not put it in one of the mail box slots at the mail centers because we don't have the keys to get it out of there and no one's gonna pick it up. So please do not use those. At some point, we hope to get the keys, but for now, um, we're gonna bring you your mail and you bring us your outgoing mail. If you're on mandatory quarantine because you have traveled or you're one of that group who was in the Sarah Bell November Theater and won't be out until tomorrow, or you've been ill, call us and we'll come and get your mail and we'll get it outbound for you. Um, if, if you're in that group and you, if, you, if you have any questions about this, if you're under quarantine or you're, if you have any questions, call Resident Services, extension 6082, Monday through Friday, and someone will help you through this or will come to your apartment and get your mail. Let's see. Um, the last thing from Abigail Spamberger's office is they did want us to, to share that they are working behind the scenes with the U.S. Postal Service to try to get a date with which our regular service will be uh, reinitiated. And that's when, in fact, our case with the office at Spam Spamberger's office will be closed. Um, so hopefully that clarifies that. I again want to thank everybody for their patience. Um, and really thank the staff for going way over and above to make sure we get you your mail as quickly as we can and get that part of uh, your lives more uh, back on track. So um, again, I wanna also thank everybody for their comments and suggestions and feedback and letters of support, emails of support. Um, we share those uh, widely. Um, any letters of compliment get shared amongst the team and um, any of your suggestions are getting shared uh, with whichever group, and there's a series of groups that are addressing them. Um, and we're, uh, we're eager to figure out all the rest of this logistically. So thank you again for your patience. If you have any questions, call your social worker, call resident services, and we'll get you what you need, hopefully. So I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna invite Deborah Jacobson up. She's got some information for you. And then she'll be followed by Sherry Grady, who also has some information. And David will close us with a, uh, a word. So thank you. Good afternoon. A lot of happy people around here today between the US mail being delivered the grocery shopping being accomplished and the families dropping off goodies to everybody. I've seen a lot of smiles and I'm so glad to see that. I have a couple uh, announcements for you. A couple of them are repeats to make sure you have clarity. The first one comes from our good neighbors at CVS Pharmacy. If you have any pharmacy needs, please call 6245. Residents can have their prescription paid for by phone. CVS is delivering those prescriptions and over-the-counter medications to the resident's store. Beginning today, though, the over-the-counter medications will only be delivered on Tuesday and Thursdays. Prescriptions will be delivered daily, focusing first on delivering the ones that are needed for that particular day. We will keep the residents, this is according to CVS, they'll keep the residents updated on any plans for any changes. Again, the CVS lines are still experiencing some problems, so if you don't get through the first time at 6245, please try again. And if you can't get through, then you can call the clinic at 6231, and someone in the clinic will be more than glad to help you. If you need your prescriptions filled, please still call the pharmacy, even if it is a refill. There's been a little confusion about refills. If you have a refill, please call the pharmacy. That's it for the CVS, but now I wanna to talk to you about the wonderful news about the mail being delivered, but with the mail being delivered, all that stuff you've been waiting for is in there. And unfortunately for all of us, the US Census has been delivered to you today. We just want to assure you that it is not something that you have to start worrying about today. Many of you need assistance with filling those out. So we asked you to just kind of hold off for now. 
we're contacting the U.S. Census, we feel like there's got to be some type of delay or postponement on that, but we'll give you an update on that as soon as we have that information. Taxes, that's another one. We, have, we do have the understanding that tax, the federal taxes, that deadline has been moved to July. We've not heard an update on the Virginia taxes yet, but we do anticipate a change there. We'll let you know as soon as we find out. But I want to make sure that you understand, if you have something you need to get to someone who's preparing your taxes, put it in an envelope and send it in the out, outside mail, and then it will be delivered to that person. Um, at this point, we cannot allow any of the tax preparers to come in at just the same as your families. More to come on that information. Salon services. We're receiving a lot of phone calls about salon services. I can tell you right now that salon services are, are not being offered this week. So for the rest of this week, if you have an appointment, it will not be scheduled for this week. We are awaiting guidance from the Virginia Department of Health, and as soon as we have that kind of guidance of telling us when we can reopen, we will certainly get that information out to you. If you have some type of salon need, you can call 6281, and Lori and her team had things such as dry shampoo, hairspray, things of that nature, and I know that that's, that's a big relief to a lot of people. My last item is about walking on the lower level of the tower. There was some confusion about why residents are not allowed to walk there. We just want to let you know that that is where our staff, our, like our housekeeping and our engineering and our employee dining room are all located in that area. And in order to avoid staff and residents interacting any more than they need to, we ask you not to walk on the lower level of the tower. We had questions about the garage over in the courtyard, and we don't see any reason why you can't walk in the garage. If you live over in the courtyard area and you want to walk in the garage area, please just use the, the same um, the guidance that we've given you in the past, which is stay six feet away from each other and just avoid each other as much as possible. We're doing everything in our power to keep you healthy. I know that there are lots of, more, lots of questions that are not answered yet. Please continue to call your social worker and resident services, and please know that we're returning those phone calls as quickly as possible. Again, stay healthy, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Hi, good afternoon, residents, staff members, and anyone else that might be watching today's update. I wanted to give you an update on the facility support services and the work that we're doing during this time. Our team is staying real busy with our usual work and as well as pitching in as needed throughout the campus. I have some updates on our current staffing situation. We are a little bit short staffed right now. We have three, um, three of five housekeepers that have actually returned from quarantine. We still have a couple that are out though, and one additional one that we sent out on Friday night who is now going to be out until um, the beginning of April. Um, engineering staff, we have two that are out on quarantine, but they are actually due back tomorrow and Wednesday, respectively. In housekeeping, we are continuing with our full service cleaning um, in the Parsons Health Center. Full service cleaning is still on hold in independent living and assisted living areas at this time, but special considerations for extenuating circumstances are um, being addressed on an individual basis. So please submit a work order if you do have an extenuating circumstance through the Works Hub or by calling 6241 and speaking with Teresa Gross or whoever might be answering the phone at that extension. We are actually um, paying a lot of special attention to our public areas, and that continues with additional disinfecting and cleaning in um, wiping down all surfaces, handrails, doorknobs, et cetera. This is very important because we um, operate in emergency response mode. We cannot open up additional spaces for programming and group activities because we have to keep everything clean and safe for everybody. Um, some additional information on trash pickup. Uh, trash pickup for residents under quarantine. Your trash will be picked up by request through Works Hub 
or by calling extension 6241, we will come to you and we will knock on your door. Please do not put your bag outside of the door as the housekeeper or whoever stops by to pick that up will be getting it directly from you. Um, trash for all other residents can go into the trash chute as per normal or the housekeeper will pick it up on your normal housekeeping day. Um, extra trash bags will also be available for those who need them. Trash collection and recycling for homes on the green and green and the glebe are is just as per normal. Work orders are being prioritized by urgency, so please be patient with us as we try to get to everybody in in a matter of time. Engineering staff is only entering apartments with emergent needs at this time and also on a case by case basis. Um, on our grounds area, watering the plants in both greenhouses and in interior spaces is going on, as well as feeding the ducks, which should make some of you very happy. Um, thank you, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at extension 5110. Good afternoon, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I'm David Curtis and I'm with the pastoral care staff. This past weekend, I spent some time listening to Handel's Messiah, and I found myself listening over and over to this specific duet for soprano and alto that is at the end of the first part. And I offer you these words from the 40th chapter of Isaiah. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd, and he shall gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those that are with young. And these words are from the 11th chapter of Matthew. Come unto him, all ye that labor. Come unto him that are heavy laden, and he will give you rest. Take his yoke upon you and learn of him, for he is meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. At this point, I ask that you gather with me in prayer. And this prayer that I'm about to offer was written by Alden Solovey. Alden is the liturgist in residence at the Pardis Institute of Jewish Studies in Jerusalem. He writes, Source of healing, cast the light of health and well-being on those who have been exposed to the coronavirus, those who have contracted the disease, and those, God forbid, who contract the disease in the future. Bless them, protect them, and bring them speedily to full recovery. Bless all who are ill with healing of body, healing of soul, and healing of spirit. Baruch atah Adonai imkor hayim. Blessed are you, Adonai, source of life. Amen. <laughs> 